Right, here we are. I'm Charlie Stanton for Charlie Talks. Is the intro there? Ha! So, another day, another bout of digital bullshit being pushed around the world wide web by none other than Reza Aslan and Mehdi Hassan. Right, kind of right. I didn't think that rhymes. I didn't think about that before I wrote it. Both giving off the strong impression that they've got nothing better to do, and perhaps since losing his spot on CNN, Reza literally has not. They've both decided to take a single sentence uttered by Sam Harris out of context, making him sound oh so sinister. Over on Twitter, and after all, what the fuck else were you expecting? Mehdi Hassan quoted Harris from an episode of his Waking Up podcast back in January of this year. In the episode entitled Friend and Foe, Harris has a conversation with friend and collaborator Majid Nawaz. The conversation's just under two hours long. But that still didn't stop Mehdi from quoting an entire ten seconds of the fucker. Sam Harris, in context, from his time code, it seems perfectly rational to say, we don't want any more Muslims. We have enough. Wow. Apparently it seems that respected journalist Mehdi Hassan thinks that quoting somebody and simply writing the word context is the same as actually providing the context itself. So that's where we're at, is it? Why exactly did I care so much about my education if this is the type of shit that well-paid people are able to pull? Do you believe that Mohammed split the moon in two? Do you believe that Mohammed flew to heaven on a winged horse, for example? I, I pay you the compliment of assuming that you, that you don't. No, I do. Ah, oh, well, fuck it, I guess nobody ever really stood a chance. Rather than the quote being a representation of Harris's actual view, which is what Mehdi's tweet tries to imply, Harris was actually throwing questions at Nawaz while trying to sympathise with the potential mindset of concerned Europeans based on... Oh, I don't know, I just can't put my finger on it! It all happens very quickly. Abdeslam is there one second and gone the next in a puff of smoke. Why don't we take a moment to listen to a filler clip to get a much better understanding of what it was Sam Harris was actually getting at. Now the clip's actually a few minutes long but bear with because you know like it's important and the truth is not bound by the confines of time or some shit. There's just the brute fact that a hundred percent of jihadists are Muslim. Right? These are not the Amish, they're not the Scientologists, they're not the Anglicans. If you take a community of Muslims from Syria or Iraq or any other country on earth and place them in the, the heart of Europe, you are importing, by definition, some percentage, however small, of radicalized people mm. or people who will be prone to radicalism at some future date where they just decide to start watching too many Anwar al-Awlaki videos, you know, it's just, yeah, yeah, and this yeah. again, this is only happens to Muslims or people who are likely to become Muslim, right? So you see this, this massacre in the, in the Christmas market, and I think many people will feel, what is the fucking point of having more Muslims in your society? Mm. It seems perfectly rational to say, we don't want any more. We have enough, right? And certainly increasing the percentage is not a help to anyone who loves freedom of speech and anything else, that any, any of the other liberal values that you and I just spoke about mm. maximizing. Mm. It's not worth the trouble. And if we can figure out some way to keep yeah. the number of Muslims down in any society, whether we're honest about this or whether we do this covertly, clearly it's rational to want to do this. And this is, this is where someone like Robert Spencer would say, amen, I would, I would presume. Mm. Can you speak to that despair? And I mean, yeah. again, this is not this is not an expression of xenophobia. This is an expression of the implication of statistics and the fact that it's only rational not to want to live in a world that looks more and more like Jerusalem at the height of the Intifada. Now, unless you're a disingenuous, lobotomized fuckhead, it's quite clear from the fuller clip that Sam wasn't expressing his own view, or necessarily a view that he agreed with, but a mindset that he knows exists. Here's a condensed version of what Sam says, just to make it even fucking clearer. This is kind of a gut reaction that I know millions upon millions of people are having. So you see this, this massacre in the, in the Christmas market, and I think many people will feel what is the fucking point of having more Muslims in your society? Mm. It seems perfectly rational to say, we don't want any more. 
we have enough. Can you speak to that despair? 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 This is kind of a gut reaction that I know millions upon millions of people are having. Can you speak to that despair? Quick to jump on yet another opportunity of Harris bashing. And why the fuck not with so much unexpected downtime? Reza Aslan joined in on the fun and spent his morning tweeting and retweeting defamatory lies and distortions of Harris's views and clearly getting a kick out of it whenever any of his followers did the same. Now, I've had my suspicions of Reza for quite some time because I think we're all aware of the power of, you know, positive things and positive looks. Right? We like hearing bullshit from attractive people, essentially. It's how the alternative therapy industry does so well, and it's how Ted Bundy managed to pull off such a blinder since seemingly bursting into everybody's conscience after a few widely shared interviews both on Fox and CNN, Reza has taken on a rather dazzling appearance. His silver Clooney hair, his smooth angelic face. Just look. He just looks so... I'm telling you that shit is calculated, right? Because now, look at him here. Motherfucker looks like the fly. Look, I know there's a teleportation machine on the side of that fucking stage. I know it, you ain't pulling the wall over my eyes, Reza. And I ain't even talking about that part of the film where he gets like his DNA spliced with the fly already and he starts getting all confident and does like acrobats and shit. No sex has taken place. Gina Davis ain't even entered the fucking frame yet. Someone had an idea. I'm telling you. If it was an ugly person trying to con you with all of that shit, you wouldn't fall for it. Hmm? And you can't have no unshaven Jeff Goldblum telling you that FGM ain't a thing. But it's gone to his head. I bet he knows it as well. But he knows it. But he knows that he's better looking now. They all went into a room. There was a board meeting and they went, Reza, right, we're going to put you at the forefront, mate, because you're saying all the right things. But we've got to do something about the way you look. Don't worry. You're going to look good, right? And people are going to lap it up. David Pakman puts together a splendidly comprehensive takedown, both of Reza's claims about the Muslim world as well as his own credentials. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you check it out. Aslan has no degree in history. A number of professional historians and religious scholars have publicly questioned the way that Aslan presents his qualifications, like professor of religion at Columbia University, Elizabeth Castelli, who wrote an article on thenation.com specifically about how Aslan represented his credentials in the Fox News interview we've heard so much about. She said that Aslan is less of a historian and more of a reader of religious history who then translates the material for a wider sort of general public audience, somewhat of a popularizer of religious history, rather than a proper historian or researcher himself. She said that Aslan would probably be better received and criticized less by historians if he were to write books and present himself as an outsider to the field of religious history, as opposed to constantly insisting how legitimate he is as a working academic historian. Uh, well, look, I mean, truly, I was kind of embarrassed. I mean, there's nothing more distasteful than an academic having to, like, trot out his credentials. I mean, it, you really come off as a jerk when you do that. But I write books about what's going on in the Muslim world because I have an expertise in what's going on in the Muslim world. My credentials as a scholar of religion. My credentials as a scholar of religion. All of the universities that have educated me and all of the universities that have employed me. I, to hold on, the I, have to, I have to respond and... to that. As, as the Islamic scholar, as the person with a PhD in Islam in this conversation. Nevertheless, an expert on uh, the Bible and on Judaism and Christianity and Islam. Well, to be clear, I am a scholar of religions with four degrees, including one in the New Testament and fluency in Biblical Greek, who has been studying the origins of Christianity for two decades. Also quick to jump onto the bandwagon was Omar Badar, Deputy Director of the Arab American Institute. And why the fuck wouldn't he be? In response to Harris, Omar tweeted, Can you explain how tweeting segments from your podcast is defamatory? Here's a quick example to illustrate the point. 
I would never date a black person. I would never date a black person I wasn't attracted to just to prove to people I'm not racist. Just a few more words, but a wildly different sentence altogether. Omar hasn't refrained from putting out his own media clips explaining how feeling threatened by a religion that, at this moment in time, is causing a lot of global bloodshed just means that we're all being paranoid! A lot of compelling arguments have been made against Trump's travel ban. That it is unconstitutional, cruel, stupid, counterproductive, and so on. Brilliant, Omar. So, there are loads of compelling reasons as to why Trump's Muslim ban isn't a good idea. Fair enough. Granted, granted. But there are absolutely no compelling arguments for why Islam might be dangerous. I don't think somebody's being that honest. But if you dig a little deeper, there is really one big underlying paranoia that enables any anti-Muslim proposal. That paranoia is the belief that Islam is a threat and that political correctness is keeping us from dealing with it. Paranoia. <laughs> Mm. Mm. I was in prison for terrorism, and I'm so proud about that, alhamdulillah. I apologize that women had to witness this today. The gun that... is exploding right now, you got people running up the street. Okay. I don't want to tell you what's going on. <laughs> no, it's alright mate, go on, I'm still with you. Go for it. Now this paranoia has spread wide because it is promoted by many different forces. From flat out bigots. Name calling. To opportunists. Name calling. To otherwise thoughtful people who are just unable to examine their own biases. Unfounded claim. Ergo. Name calling. Now the problem is, while Reza et al are doing this sort of thing to stick up for moderate everyday Muslim families that are peaceful, that live amongst us in the West and other secular nations. While they're doing that, in order to keep up this pretense that Islam is a religion of peace and all the violence that we're seeing across Europe and other places of the world has nothing to do with religion, while they keep up that absolute lie, they're doing utterly nothing to help the poor, suffering Muslims that live in Muslim majority countries under theocracies where Islam really does rule and Sharia really does rule. Those voices are being drowned out. They're the voices of the people that need to go into hiding or hide their identity for making videos on YouTube and try to communicate to all of us. They're the people under death threats. They're the people that have had to leave their families because their families have cast them out for wanting to leave the religion, which they could quite possibly be punished for or something as inane as choosing not to marry a man that your father chooses for you and your father and other members of your family decide to hold you down while somebody pours acid over your body. They're the voices that are not being helped from the bullshit that falls out of the mouths of celebrity Islamist apologists like Reza Aslan and others. On that note, maybe in future we can hope that they accurately represent the views of people that they disagree with. PAIN! <laughs> I know! It's not even gonna... Uh, I, had to light, I had to end it with something like uplifting, didn't I? Like, like, like that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> ah. مثلاً لما نشوف الإخوان دائماً يقولون داعش مثلاً اللي قاعد يسوونه ما يمثلون الإسلام هات تيارات الميليشيات ما يمثلون الإسلام. 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 ما يمثلون هذه كلها مخالفات مثل اللي قطع الشارع على مخالفه هذا مخالفه يدفع مو المعذره المعذره منو المسؤول عن المخالفه السؤال وزاره الداخليه تحيلها الى محكمه هذه القضايا اللي لازم يقتل فيها ولا يرتد ولا كذا من يقوم فيها تقارن الامور قاضي Thanks very much, Dan. The whole site has collapsed. The whole building has collapsed. The whole building has collapsed. The building has collapsed. اتقارن مخالفة مرورية. ابقتل إنسان ارتد عندنا. في شر في شر الله عز وجل. يقتل. يجب أن يقتل. 
بس هذا يقيم الكتاب يدفع جزية يدفع جزية لشو هو صاغر هو صاغر بس شكرا I already know what you're going to say I'm taking him out of contacts and Islam is not a race it's bad ideas blah 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 but in reality when you support things like a Muslim ban I think we both agree his ban I've already said it's stupid it's counterproductive it's un-American but let's get that right out of the way first that we both think this is a dumb idea the Muslim ban right when you support things like a Muslim ban yeah, I mean, he, he is, uh, first of all, Trump is like uh, Chauncey Gardner's evil twin. I mean, he's, you know, if he does something right on this issue, it'll be Being by accident. There, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you support things like a Muslim ban. Um, so, and the ban itself is just the sort of idea you'd think he would come up with and, and press enthusiastically. It's a terrible idea. When you support things like a Muslim ban. Even if your only concern is security. When you support things like a Muslim ban.